Hey guys, I love this song by the way, so I'm gonna just lower it for you a little bit. Hello guys, my name is Chico Lopez, you know who I am. We got a very important topic today. Um, it's, you know, crock potting on my head, thinking about different things. I was driving today, running into the rain, heavy rain today. I was there for about an hour and a half doing these dogs and enjoying them, enjoying the puppies, enjoying everything else in my life. Um, it was after work, of course. And I was thinking about, you know, how can I help you? What can I do for you guys? You know, you guys keep sending me messages and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for those that are backing me up against a lot of the haters that are popping up, jealous people. By the way, great tea, amazing tea. It's night time, so no coffee, just tea. My favorite cup, awesome book. Five things that you can do today to identify what is a real pebble. And let me just get out of the way the fact that there's a big difference between what is a real pit bull and what is the very best of the best, top of the top, cream of the cream, American pit bull terrier. You know, everything comes in levels in life, okay? But the first thing that we need to get out of the way is what is a real pit bull? So, because there's a lot of people out there, 90% of the people that think are a pit bull, they don't have a pit bull. I had a guy that called me the other day for 30 years you know, he says he's been a, a master of dogs and been breeding this dog for 30 years. And we had a long, nice conversation and he couldn't believe he did, never had a real pit bull. I mean, he was in shock. He was a really nice guy. We talked for a little bit, sent him to my link. He called me back two days later and said, I'm in shock. So I can't believe that I didn't know all these things that I know. I don't know where you've been. And I said, you're right, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I should have come here a little sooner. I talked to a couple of people before in the past and I give them the idea or you know people that actually have leadership but the leadership was not there so I took it upon me and I'm making the changes to make you better and make everybody better so five things that will help you to identify what is a real pit bull and then from that point going forward you're going to make a decision whether you want a real pit bull or what level if you want the best you're going to come to me now we're going to move forward I'm going to say these things that I took a note here while, I was, while we were driving number one is going to be the source folks it is so important, it's so basic. Let me lower this a little bit. It's so basic when it comes to picking up the, the base, you know, the, the, what it takes to buy an American people Terrier. For me, it was research. Two and a half to three years of research, searching, and, and I knew that the first things I found were not really the best sources. But I wanted to take a chance, and I trusted my judgment at the moment, but I had this thing in my head, I'm gonna give you a chance to this, I'm gonna try something else, by the time our family look at these dogs, we had a collection of a lot of dogs. And each one of the guys that sold us the dogs believed what they had were the best. They were very passionate about the dogs. They have many stories to back up their, their beliefs and stuff like that. But the very end of the day was that at the very beginning of it, I was buying from the very top dog people of, of the time, 1994. And each one of them had the story. It was very difficult to find who was better than the next guy because each one of them has some sort of merits that put him out there. One was a book writer, wrote a couple books, was a good dogman, very famous as his own little era, had made a couple of champions and maybe a grand champion or two, and was a good guy. I got the dogs, we paid about $3,500 back in 1994. 1994, $3,500. The dogs were not bad, they were good, but they were not great. I was looking for great, and so, that's very important. I, in 1994, I bought myself into a couple of the websites that are still running around. Believe it or not, those were never in my eyesight. They were never part of what I will say, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna consider this to be an option. Just I had this sixth sense and, you know, didn't, I, I knew that this was too commercial. In the back of it, there was a lot of talk and, you know, like brand naming and stuff like that, mentioning dogs and stuff like that, but didn't belong to this man. You know, the dogs themselves were not created by him. The merits and the dogs were not his. He was always throwing other people's names to back up his brand. And something in the back of my head and my gut told me this is not the way to go. So I was always looking for the source, the pedigree of the man. That's really what I was looking for. Because the pedigree of the man is kind of like number two, which is gonna be very close to this. But we're talking about the man before, the merits. So, very important because in my notes here about me, you want to take notes, take notes on this. Trust, very important to have trust. You know, you're looking at something, you say, this guy is number one in what? Selling dogs, maybe number one seller is selling dogs.
Maybe the number one guy in the neighborhood. Maybe the number one guy in the, in the, in the internet. Maybe the number one. What's the number one about? So the trust. Trust the foundation. If he could not trust the foundation of his dogs to make marriage himself, then his dogs to me were worthless. The selection is attached to the trust. Selection is very important. And I'm gonna to get to that in just a little bit when I get to the numbers down. These words are gonna keep popping up on each one of these sections. The other part is quality. That's gonna go down to all the questions. And it's gonna be also the experience involving it and genetics. So when it comes to the dogmen, the number one source, the number one uh, principle to look for, the pedigree of the dogmen, you're gonna find all these different words that are involved in it. So always look at it from a point of view where you're looking at something and you're saying, what's behind this man? What he has produced? What am I gonna get out of it? What is it good for me? How other people are interacting on it? Are he selling, what are his numbers? Are he selling like 10,000 dogs a year? 1,000 dogs a year? 100 dogs a year? Who he, who's buying from him? You understand? The quality of the people buying from him, are just some dogs from the neighborhood buying dogs from this guy? You understand, is he popular with the, with, with, with the criminals? Or is, is he popular with the good guys? These things are important, you understand? So we're gonna go, that was number one. Keep that in mind. Merits, merits, numbers, merits, consistency is going to be all over this, this number one part, okay? His character as a person. You cannot take some garbage guy and then all of a sudden you got some great dogman. You're not gonna have that. You might have a good or great dog owner, but dogman, very difficult word, very powerful word, okay? Number two. We're gonna move into something that's very similar to number one. But this pedigree is not gonna be based on the person. It's gonna be based on the dog. Of course, number one was important, the culture of the man. Now, his culture will allow him to create a great pedigree for the dog. Again, selection, the trust, the quality, the excellence. All this is gonna be involved into this. My notes here says that, you know, what's the front of this man? You understand? When you're looking at this dog, are you looking at a collection of the work of a man that has integrity? And or a couple of men or a couple of group of men that you know have high standards, or you're looking at a watered down collection of maybe dogmen, breeders, um, pet owners, people that just hold dogs and do some breedings or whatever. What is the standard? Do you have a salad of different standards, or you have a smooth going up, going up, going up, better, steady uh, standards on the on the dog itself? So the pedigree of the dog. Many dogs that have a pedigree are worthless. You heard this from me. You know, you look at a dog, you look at it, sometimes you look at a bully, says so you got a pedigree. But the dog is worthless to be a pit bull. It's not a pit bull. Take a look at some giant dog, 150 pound dogs. They're attached to a pit bull. They use the word pit bull so lightly to make sure that they themselves get some spike and automatic success because everybody loves the word pit bull. Some guy says, you know what? The real pit bull really is an APVT. Well, my friend, before they were called APVTs in 1909, people already called them pit bulls, okay? And because they were pits, uh, they were bulls that were pitted, okay? So when it comes to this, we need, you need to know that the pedigree in the, in the dog especially is not a promise, right? It's not a guarantee, okay? It's something that is a combination of a promise and a guarantee. That's what we're looking for, you understand? We're looking for something very, very precise in terms of genetics. The genetics gotta be there, okay? No genetics, just pedigrees, no form. We gotta be in check on the details. You know, a great man told me that the devil, the devil is in the details. You literally have to look at these details. You know, the devil is in the details. Very, very important. So be very analytical when it comes to the part. You know, I'm very pragmatic. But at the same time, there's some moments where you gotta be analytical and look at these things and then right away convert that into action, okay? So this is very important for you millennials. You love to see data, you love to see uh, information and that's very important, okay? So when it comes to pedigree, remember, even if the dog have a pedigree, sometimes pedigrees are, or some dogs, the dogs do not represent what the pedigree is about. And I'll tell you a little example when it comes into overbreeding and breeding. I, I told the, the guy the other day, I said, you know what? If I have 10 males and I have 10 females and I have couples, okay? And I take these couples and I give them to different people. And I go ahead, breed those dogs. They start breeding them, some guys have different standards. Automatically they say, we're gonna tie it up Chico Lopez blood, we're gonna tie it up. They start breeding among themselves. I'll come 20 years from now, most likely my dogs will be gone, will be lost. 
because standards, because quality. So you can have a pedigree of Chico Lopez dogs, but if it didn't come directly from the hand of Chico Lopez, you probably don't have a good dog with Chico Lopez standards. Because it's important to have the standards. Standards are very important. So the standards are the number one, which is the dogman or the person or the source. Number two is the pedigree of the dog. Very important. So you have a street dog, it's a nice dog, you like him, okay, God bless you. I had a street dog as well. I loved him to death. He was a great dog. I trust him so much he slept with my children. But once again, a lot of this greatness that you see on those dogs is basically sparkles, you know, sparkles of the things that came from those great, those great dogs in the back. You know, some of those great dogs are in front of it. You know, but the real American People Terrier does have a tradition. And the pedigree is a combination of the standards of the men, the quality of the dogs inside, the genetic selection best to best, 140 years coming all the way from the back, something solid, something important. And I get so passionate when it comes to those things because there's no negotiable. There's some areas of the dogs, there's no negotiable. You understand what I'm saying? So you, you have a dog, and you've been thinking it's an American people Terrier, real pit bull. Okay, keep the dog. You didn't know about it, now you know. You understand? Now start looking for a real pit bull. You know, a real American people Terrier. You're gonna find show dogs, you're gonna find all kinds of different things. But then you're gonna say, you know what, where, where, where do I go, you know? If you're kind of crazy like me and a lot of people out there that really love courage, and really love relentlessness, and really love, you know, genetics, you're gonna look for the best. To me, there's simply no other option. Fact is that my registered name as a, as a kennel, one of the associations, is only the best. Because I only believe in that. That's part of my principles, that's part of my core. I've been chasing only the best. So now let's move into number three. Very interesting, guys. You can go back in this video, rewind a little bit, and take a look at some of the things I'm telling you. Write it down on a piece of paper. Now we're going to number number three. Number three is size matters. It matters in many different ways. Because if you bring me a dog here and tell me this, you know, you were able to create what they call miniature pit bulls, I'm gonna say, my friend, I'm so sorry. And I said, that's not, a, that's not a real pit bull. No, but it has a pedigree, it doesn't matter. But the, the size is not correct. Because if I'm gonna take the, the, the people that actually own that real, real um, standard on the breed are the real dog men. Because if you have a dog that thousand judges said, this dog has the standard, we gave him social cops, and we gave him this and we gave him that. But you give me that dog, and I look at him and I say, well, I don't want that dog. I wouldn't take this dog to my house. I wouldn't feed this dog if it came to my yard. I would have gave it back to somebody else. That dog right there, I don't care what you tell me about the standard of the dog. I don't want it. He's not an American people terrier, period. Remember that, the dogmen. We created the dogs. We created, other people do other different jobs with the dogs. But the creators, dogmen, real dogmen, all right? Real dogmen, top of the line, elite dogmen, elite level. So when it comes to this, Size does matter. You bring me a dog and you say, you know, this dog, I saw him on television, I saw him whatever, and this is 150 pound, you know, giant pit bull. Excuse me? 150 pound. That's not an American pit bull terrier, folks. Same deal with the small dog. I wouldn't take that even if you give to me say, maybe a nice dog, yeah. Maybe nice with children, yeah. But the word pit bull was attached to it to bring all this grace and to bring everything that comes with the American pit bull terrier, which is heritage, okay, history, the great warriors of the past, the great men behind it, the standards, it's not on standards, so it's not an American people terrier. You can hear, look, on Facebook, on Instagram, there's a thousand experts with no real credentials that go to a dogman. They have no real credentials, you understand? So we're gonna have to pick up dogs that are precise, the very best of the American people terrier. What is the standard? Folks, you know, I tell you the standard, I'm gonna tell you from my trips and travels around the world, over 56 cities will stop counting. It make no sense to keep counting. You understand what I'm saying? So, I will say this to you. I seen dogs at 30 pounds, many times. Males and females of quality animals. I seen really good dogs around 45, 46, 47 pound males, 50 pound males, 52 pound males, and some good ones at 55. You understand? And females who are around 30s, although are all the way to about 48 pounds. After that, it becomes kind of ridiculous. You understand? So that's, those are the right sizes. And I'm not talking about the dogs for, you know, hog fat, no. The American Pitbull Terrier is not a fat animal. No, it's not. It's athletic, it's strong. 
You know, look at an MMA fighter and multiply that by 20 times. That's an American people's hair. Better than anything you can think of, all right? Pay attention to that. Now, we talk about the size is important. So this eliminates about 60% of the dogs out there. Automatically, right at the top, boom, gone, finito. Bye-bye, Charlie. You're not a table anymore. You're not a pillow. You're not a real American people terrier. You never will be near the very best of the American people terrier. You're never going to be near May Day, near, you know, champion, awesome ball, grand champion, Sig of the Great. You know, you're never going to be around there because there's so much more to it, okay? Now we go to number four. Number four is important, folks, and it's a, it, and it's a thing that you can just figure it out. You already know the size. You know the source, all of that. Sometimes you know the source, sometimes you don't know if the pedigree is there, but you can tell by the size. Now you go to the second dummy proof, um, just eye contact type of observation, color. Yes, folks, number four is color. Very important. This being an evolution process, by the way, just to give you a little bit of information. The first dogs that came to the Americas, some, some you know, on the East Coast, Boston, all those places in the 1800s, those dogs, were half and a half, and they were not called American people terrorists at the time, but the combinations after 10, 15, 20, 30 years, 40 years started going through and started taking a particular shape. So the name came about of American people terrier, or APVT. And what happens is those dogs typically from the best families, like the Kobe family used to be a real good dog. Um, when you look at those dogs, they were white collar, brindle, um, white with spots, you know, maybe some blacks, more black than, than white. But with time, that went changing. And now today, and some time ago, some of the better dogs, based on gameness, of course, they were red colors. And today, most of the grand champions and great champions of, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they were all yellow. And I see people that have black chocolate dogs, and all of a sudden, they got a red color, you know, the pedigrees of all these dogs, like within one or two generations. Then I know they're hanging papers. I know these. Maybe they got stolen dogs from me, you know? A lot of people stole my dogs. Some people pick up crumbs from the fell off the table. You know, that happens. And that's fine for them, you know, if you help them, what the heck. But I tell you about colors. This is something called, very particular in the American People Terrier. It's called, I call it myself, it's something that I call it this way myself, it's called a controlled, progressive evolution process. Because it's controlled because the dogmen and the standards, the standards of dogmen create a beautiful dog like Grand, Ch like Grand Champion Yellow, Grand Champion Mayday, or Champion Awesome Buck. When it comes to the other side of the standard, which is what I'll call the negative standards, or no standards at all, you know, some cholos trying to create something, they create a bully. You know, oh, let me get the bigger head, let me get the bigger arms, the shorter. And now you got some things that are ridiculous. You think, how will this dog have sex? And you know, can this dog walk for about half a block before dying? And the dogs can't even have, you know, can't even have, uh, females can't give birth without having a C-section. All this kind of garbage is all created by show people, people that have no, no, it's, it's crazy. Crazy, backyard breeders and all that stuff. They destroy not only the American people terrorists, they destroy every breed they get the hands off. Okay, not just the American people terrier. So, colors on a performance level, they are moving, they are changing, that progressive process, that evolution, growing process. So they go from those white colors into the brindles, into mixing a little bit of the yellows coming through, the reds, then the reds with the yellows, a little bit of blacks, the guys have complete yards of black, black dogs, and then 20 years later, they only have red dogs, or they have a mix. When you go to the yard of a man that really got his thing really figured out, and even when they have black dogs, they're all black dogs. They have a standard. Somehow that's what they're going. That's the route they're going. When you come to men like me, you have reds. Red, red, red noses and, and buck skins, which are red with a black nose. With that being said, I'm gonna tell you some colors that automatically will knock off a lot of people off the table. Merle color. No real dog will take a Merle color dog. Plus, you know, you're not bringing real American people terriers to get that color. You know, white dogs, with a pink nose or whatever, even white at all. Look, guys, you cannot go anywhere in the world and find a serious dog with a white dog. Not with consistency, not with the top, at the top of the level performance. You're not gonna get that. A blue dog, you cannot give a top dogman or a serious dogman, a real or serious professional fans here at the breed. You can't give him a blue dog. It's not a real American people terrier. Somebody might tell you it's a real American people terrier. God bless whoever tells you that. 
Does he have papers? Or did they come out of people? Yeah. Look, guys, take a look at the movie 300. Remember the guy that looks like Quasimodo coming like this with the shield? That guy, what they say, you cannot go here. Selection. They wouldn't want to take him with him. And that came back to be the traitor. That's the same thing when it comes to genetics. You take that dog that's worthless and you put in a genetic program, sometimes along the line, you're going, we're winning, we're winning. But all of a sudden, Quasimodo comes along the line and screw you. You know, don't get that. You know, it's genetics. You know, the recorder is laughing, so the camera is moving a little bit. But it's the truth. That's how it works. Don't ruin my, don't ruin my recording, all right? Now, we're going to number five. A little bit of fun there, guys. Let me get a, a couple, not a coffee or tea. Nice tea, by the way. Made by my better half. Number five, very important. Never a, a dog biter. Don't get a dog biter. Don't come, oh, this dog is a killer, kills people, woof. Stay away from this. You know, people call me and say, hey, I want to train this dog for protection. I want to use it to do this or whatever, obedience attack. I'm totally against it. I don't want my dogs doing that. Because the, the, the American People Terry is a dog made of velvet and steel. And he has animal prayer. He will go after an animal most of the times. And, you know, some, I get friends, and I had done it before, where I have winning animals and I have them together, mother and daughter, different ages. And when I'm there, I'm the alpha male, they respect me. There's no fussy and jumping around anything against each other. But if I leave those dogs running around and I go to the supermarket and there's some food and there's gonna be a little argument about something, that argument will escalate into what is called a kennel accident. And most likely they will, some dogs will get hurt or maybe killed. So the animal, the American People Terrier is not a pack animal. So if you ever saw anything like two or three dogs drinking on a feeding bowl, not high quality American People Terrier not the sample to follow, you know, drinking, all right? That's not the way we're going. Shy dogs. You know, some dogs might have, might be a little bit confused, traveling and stuff like that, you know, and they might be scared of their environment for a little bit, just a little bit, just, you know, when they travel, the noise, the bottomatic pressure, so on and so forth, but within, within hours, within minutes, you know, they're gonna be secure by themselves. Most of the dogs are gonna be secure themselves automatically, no matter where they go. I pick up for this. When I do my selection, I pick up for this. No shy dogs. Shy dogs typically turn out to be men biters. You understand? So be very careful with that, okay? So these are the five things that I told you today that are basic things that you should know about picking up an American people Terrier, a real American people Terrier. You gotta have this. Gotta fit within this kind of a cookie cutter, but a smart people cookie cutter, okay? So if you want to know how the dog should look like, take a look at my website, therealpitbull.com. Navigate through it. Look at my dogs. Look at the Grand Champion Maiden. You know, Grand Champion Yellow. Take a look at my video. It's called the Golden Vein. That's the Golden Vein. The mountain, there's going to be a little bit of gold everywhere. But the vein where all the gold is coming from, that is important, folks. That is for you. It's good for you. It's good for me. And it's good for the breed in general. I'm going to be making these videos because... A lot of millennials are contacting me. A lot of old timers are telling me thank you. I know there are some forces out there that are crying. A lot of breeders, backyard breeders are going to be like, man, screw Chico Lopez or whatever. Folks, my merits, okay? Dogs of the year, grand champions, champions, race to the merits, travel around the world, top of the line dogmen, best of the best. You know, I hate to rub this all the time, but I have to because we live in a world which most of the information is fake news. So for you guys giving fake news out there, I got news for you. I am the man and I'm giving you the truth. And the people that are coming to my channel, they're getting the right information. You guys coming to my channel, if you don't buy a dog from me, that's fine. At least you're learning something from me. And for those guys that are imitating me, do it the right way so you can help other people and lift other people to get the right information because I will not be able to give dogs to everyone in the world. But I'm showing you how big I am. I want the breed to be better. I'm taking it to the next level. I'm creating the awakening. I'm taking the dogs and putting them in the hands of the right people. You guys that are on the top of the, you know, of your game and you want to get better, you, you need this courage, you need this inspiration. The American People Terror is your dog. The very best of it is really your dog. You understand? So I'm, what I'm creating, I'm creating an awakening. You don't have to look through the swamp full of criminals, drug dealers, garbage men, all these people, you understand? To try to get some dog that you don't know if it's true. Now you can come to me, the Real American Pitbull Terrier, which it comes, I'll give you the easy link, 123pitbulls.com. Folks, God bless you, Godspeed, American Pitbull Terrier is a great dog. Bye-bye.